Welcome back to a Tomboy Reacts. We have on tap today the dark reality of Drake and Josh. They were never friends by Patrick. Now, my childhood, it consisted of those shows. Drake and Josh, SpongeBob, um, Dexter's Lab, Powerpuff Girls, all of that. Cat and dog, it consisted of all that, and I love these two. Now, now they're growing up. Growing up, you know that most people weren't really friends. <laughs> That's just how it was. I mean, they were actors. We were children. It it worked for its time, and it work, it's working for children now that are our youngins, basically, the generation before us. Lord, I'm getting old. But, um. Uh, you know what? Let's just check it out. Let's just check it out. People fall in love with their first image of you. We all fell in love with two best friends. Jo right, like Drake and Josh. They they were they were they were the duo. Josh Peck, a chubby but lovable outsider from New York. And shout out to Josh Peck. He's been doing great for himself lately. And Drake Bell, a good-looking guitar player. Drake Bell, I can't say too much about it. I <laughs> can't say the same for you, buddy. I don't know what happened. I'm. I really don't know what happened. They're from California. The two teens couldn't be more opposite, but their chemistry together was infectious. Right. While we fondly think of the brotherly love they displayed on television, the dark- Hug me, brother! <laughs> reality exposed by Josh Peck recently is that they were actually never friends. Let's take it back to where Drake and Josh first met, the Amanda Show. Yo, this look at the quality back then, too. That, now, for back then, there was amazing quality. Now, people are lying. I want HD this. I want HD that. 1080 me, baby. <laughs> 1080 me. Catch comedy show was basically Nickelodeon's version of Saturday Night Live starring Amanda Bynes. The show was wildly Amanda loved by Bynes. Nickelodeon fans. Drake Bell was a regular Finally character since too. the very first episode in Finally 1999. Released. Josh wouldn't become an on-screen regular until seasons two and three. Slowly he was integrated in the show, and those two had some iconic sketches that we still love today. Drake right. wasn't very fond of Josh in the beginning because he was the only boy on the show. But they had- What? Come on, I can I didn't know that. I didn't know that at all. Very similar interests in old movies and comedies. They would bounce funny ideas off each other and These can quickly develop great hair, chemistry. The they, producer, Dan they, Schneider, got some pressure from the network to come up with another buddy comedy just like Keenan and Kel. While filming right. one of the last episodes of the season where Drake and Josh fight over a shrimp, Stephen Malaro, who was a writer on The Amanda Show, walked over to Dan and was like, those two guys are your buddy comedy right there. Six months later, because they Drake and Josh a shrimp. Was Make sure you're hydrated while watching this video. Drake Bell and Josh Peck. Make sure I'm hydrated. I got me some water right here. They've grown up on the Amanda show. Hey, he said make sure I'm hydrated. Fending off frog puppets and getting beaten up by girls on a regular basis. So what's next? For I dynamic? know that was a stunt double too. They had to have been. Their own show. Nickelodeon presents Drake and Josh in Drake and Josh. Imagine having to do that in front of the green screen. You're not, you're, you're not looking at nothing. You will notice in this video how all the tropes, storylines, and character traits in the Drake and Josh show Very turned out typical. to be the exact opposite of how their real life futures went. Josh went on to be a very right. successful, popular, and handsome actor. Megan, aka Miranda Cosgrove, went from evil little girl to sweet, unproblematic. And then I just, I think they just stopped. The new I call it, I believe. Successful actor, and Drake went on to plead guilty to child endangerment while still struggling to get his music career off the ground in America. Drake Parker and Josh Nichols were two brothers bound by their parents' marriage, forced to live in the same house, go to the same school, hang out with the same friends while having totally opposite personalities. Mm -hmm. Josh was the hefty, emotional dork, while Drake was a smooth-talking ladies' man who led a rock band. The first season was a little more typical to any sitcom, coming up with catchphrases and basic plot lines. Yep. You, you gotta set the foundation. Luckily, the show got much better after season one. They consistently got themselves in ridiculous situations and had to either work together or against each other to get out of them. Damn, my man's overacting. Like when they came up with a master plan to sell Gary Coleman grills, which got them in jail, versus when they were fighting each other over a foam finger. In the beginning, it was very common that Josh was the butt of the joke. I mean... And let me just say, one thing about this show is I like when Josh lost all the weight that they still kept him on. Like, they didn't just kick him off and try to replace him because he didn't fit the role. Come on now, camera. 
because they, they he didn't fit the role in particular. I like that they kept him on. It's very easy to pick on the overweight, goofy kid. Drake, on the other hand, would often be the bad guy. He was lazy, rude, and self-centered. He wouldn't stand up for his brother Josh. He would hang out with girls and friends without him, and basically had a hard time accepting Josh as his brother. As the seasons went on, the audience loved them both. Josh was not a punching bag anymore, and sort of right. just the sweet, jolly brother who was there for Drake no matter what. Plus, he had lost a lot of weight by the last season, so the fat jokes didn't really work anymore. Drake warmed up to Josh. His character remained the inconsiderate troublemaker, but now mm -hmm. Josh was having more luck with girls. He was less nerdy and became more competitive with Drake. Ultimately, at the end of every episode, they resolved their differences and concluded with a happy character arc. That's what they call it. Character arc. Happy moment. These two just understood each other when it came to performing. Drake and Josh were the new age Bob Hope and Bing Crosby, Abbott and Costello, Martin and Lewis, Cheech and Chong, Keenan and Kel. They were so good, it made us all believe that they were best friends beyond the screen. And I'm sad to admit that that was not the case. Off the that was not the case. Wow. Give me what I my competitor social media pulls every class. Get money, bro. I understand. And the show, their lives were pretty normal in the sense that they weren't these mega famous celebrities ducking paparazzi everywhere they go. Plus, remember their target audience was 9 to 15 yeah, year kids. olds who had no way of showing Drake kids. and Josh how much they loved the show. A lot of us forget that in 2005 there was barely any social media, there were no smartphones, no YouTube, no live streams, no follower counts. They were no TikTok to 9 to 5 while other kids went to school and they went home to their families every day just like anyone else. These two just did what most normal teens do. Go to parties, hang out with girls, maybe get in some trouble. Well, at least Drake did. Josh wasn't part of it. At least much. Drake Josh did. was actually going through some really tough times. Josh Peck was raised by a single mother. He actually never met his father. He was always interested in being an entertainer, doing stand-up comedy at the age of 9 years old because anything This man was, was doing stand-up at 9. Back in the day. That's crazy definitely out of the question. However, he always wanted to fit in. Being an outsider wasn't this cool, interesting thing for kids in the late 90s. Think about popular films and shows glamorizing Clueless, Revenge of the Nerds, and Dazed and Confused. High school life. You had the jocks, the hot girls, the Ooh, nerds. This, Kids like Josh Peck were hoping then. that they would be a part of the popular crowd and get invited to the parties when high school came. But we all know he wasn't. Drake was very similar to the character he portrayed on the show. A slick Cali bro who had girlfriends and went to parties. Did you see that old MTV mic? Bro, MTV has changed so much. And I... I don't think it's for the better, but they've changed. Parties as a teen. So them being very different worked on the show, but wasn't very practical in real life. I think they mentioned having sleepovers when they were casted on the Amanda show, but as they got older, they didn't hang out in their personal lives. Josh was sick and tired of being this version of himself he hated. It wasn't all vanity though. He knew he would keep getting casted as a fat funny guy for the rest of his career if he didn't make a change. He wanted to have a successful act. Cause they will typecast you. They will typecast you. Like, I think, um, I forgot the woman's name, but she played Tammy in like, uh, and then she played in that movie with, I think it's The Heat with, what's we'll this, Angelina jo No, Sandra Bullock. I can't remember her name, but she played in that movie and she played the lady named Tammy. They really type, they typecast her like hard. Even, um, I think it's Kevin Bacon, they typecast him hard too. Jim Carrey, they tried to typecast him, but Jim Carrey just, he, he just blew everything out of the water, really. But, um, it's some, it's a lot of people in Hollywood that they typecast career. So that also inspired the weight loss, which we witnessed on TV. As he started to lose weight, he was finally starting to fit in with the normal kids. So Josh started to do what normal kids do. And suddenly normal I'm like kids, okay. now looking like a normal kid, but I'm a normal team. And I'm like, oh. <laughs> They do drugs, and that's normal, and they oh, go to Lord. house parties, and they go to clubs. Josh started acting more like Drake's character, but in real life. It was a double-edged sword. Obviously, he was being accepted socially, but being heavily addicted to drugs was the price he had to pay. By the time they were both 20, I Drake didn't even know he was, he had gotten addicted to drugs. You learn something new every day. You have to excuse my camera. I don't know what, what's going on with it today. It, it wants to come and go in and out of focus. Come on now. I don't know what's wrong with it. You have to excuse it. And Josh was over. Their relationship, it's complicated. Drake loved his time spent on the show. I it was thought, what he I thought those were oranges. I thought those were oranges for a hot minute. A hot second.
he always dreamed of. His dad raised him on buddy comedies like Dean and Jerry, Abbott and Costello. Once he met Josh and they got their own TV show, he was living his biggest dream. Plus, he was absolutely adored by the Nickelodeon world. Taking a look at this list of Kids' Choice Awards, which Ooh, is- look at the best TV actor, favorite TV actor, um, best TV show, fave comedy show. Yo, Pretty much the biggest thing you can get as a bag. Nickelodeon star. 2006, favorite TV actor, Drake Bell. 2007, favorite TV actor, Drake Bell. 2007, best Drake TV Bell. actor, Drake Bell. 2008, favorite TV actor, Drake Bell. It was very clear that Drake was the star and Josh was the co-star, despite Josh oh, being funnier crazy. and more How memorable in almost every <laughs> aspect. Drake had full shady. intentions on moving forward with his career alongside Josh, doing more movies and TV shows together yeah, just like the buddy comedy the duos he idolized. Josh had other plans. Drake was never aware of what Josh was going through behind the scenes. Josh wanted to move on from the show. He was known as the fat, funny punching bag who brought way more comedic value to the scene. When we watch these old episodes, we feel happy. Josh sees an underappreciated, depressed, overweight and insecure child hiding his true feelings from everyone. So he took his own route. Immediately after Nickelodeon, he got a voice acting role as Eddie in Ice Age, got to star in the he film. He was Eddie in Ice Age? I didn't even remember. I couldn't even, like, that's crazy. That was a big role for him. Ice Age was big. The Wackness, then. which premiered at the Sundance Film Festival and was critically acclaimed. He basically stayed busy every single year since then, having a film or TV role, including yeah, the Fox sitcom true. Grandfathered, where he was a star alongside John Stamos. He became one of the most popular creators on Vine, which is where he would eventually meet David Dobrik, the Paul Brothers, the Vlog Squad, and become a popular influencer on YouTube with millions of subscribers. Drake hung around Nickelodeon a little longer. He did star in a terrible, super bad remake movie That's called terrible. College, as well as a poorly he received that. spoof comedy superhero movie. After that, for the next decade, a few small roles and a bunch of random movies that you never heard of. His career stayed alive because of consistent TV those. work given to him on Nickelodeon. He did tons of different voice acting roles and one-off shows throughout I've the never years. Heard his music career either. is actually very interesting. Disney knew how to set up their actors' music careers, whereas all Nickelodeon music careers struggled. Drake has no gold or platinum records in America despite Shade. releasing music consistently for the past 17 I've years. Never However, heard of any in Mexico and various Spanish-speaking countries, Drake Bell, aka Drake Campana, is a huge star. He's had multiple high-charting Billboard singles and albums in Mexico. In some of these countries, he does shows for thousands of I people. Never he heard speaks Spanish, that. releases all his new music in Spanish. I remember him. I remember that name. Maybe a couple. I heard a couple times, but I never heard any of his music provide Spanish subtitles with everything he does. I'm not really sure how that all happened, but it's been very fruitful for him. In 2014, he filed for bankruptcy, owing over half a million dollars in like taxes. In 2016, few, he was arrested for his second ago. driving under the influence charge. Oh, the he Google hit me with another ad. Program completely changed the trajectory and you can't life. skip this I've one. I've always been interested in computers, but I never thought I could turn this into a career. It allowed me to have that path into a career that I'm passionate about. Hey, do you ever walk into a room and completely forget why you're there? Yeah, totally. Do you ever feel like no one knows who you really are and if- He served one day in jail and four years probation. When you're not invited to the wedding, the message is clear. Now, I remember, I remember that whole little, little, I guess you could call it a scandal. I remember that. True colors have come out today. Message is loud and clear. Ties are officially cut. I'll miss you, brother. Summer of 2017, Josh got married to his longtime girlfriend, Paige, and Drake was not invited. The great fallout of Drake and Josh was the new viral gossip piece, and the internet was loving it. It seemed like just yesterday they were roommates playing ping pong and working at the movie theater. We thought Drake would be the best man. Turns out, he didn't even know about the wedding. The story blew up bigger than Drake could imagine. Thankfully, a couple months later, they made up and did some YouTube content together. They made it again. We're all good. Then they they both spent the next year or so doing press for other projects and people just kept asking about the marriage incident. They had already publicly You know made what? Up. People can never let stuff go. Like if they they let it go, you need to let it go. If they, they didn't make a big deal about it, why are you making a big deal about it? Let it go. People are people. Celebrities are still human. They're human just like everybody else. You have it's like you having a fight with your brother. Y'all make up. All right, y'all good. You don't want somebody or your cousin coming in. Hey, what y'all doing that fight for? Hey, you think he did it? Did, you think he did it? You know, they human just, just let, they let them have their moment. But I guess interviewers wanted the drama. In 2018 and 2019, they made a number of different content pieces together, and it really seemed like their relationship was as good as it can get. Guys, we're together. What I else feel like that's happening. <laughs> in 2019, Josh came up with the idea to do a reboot of their classic show. The name of the reboot? 
Josh and Drake. When he reached out to Drake to read the script, things got weird. Uh, the idea was that Drake was going to be a failed musician put, and Josh was a successful real estate agent. They now listen, now come on, now, now come on, now Josh, you knew that wasn't gonna work. You knew that wasn't gonna work. They were basically parodying Drake's real life as a musician in like, Mexico, yeah, you Josh's knew that was, was a totally made up life. Maybe they were trying to get back at Drake because his character was originally the cool guy and Josh was the loser. The opening line in the very first episode was supposed to be, hug yourself, kid, instead of their trademark saying, hug me, brother, which would have just been a slap in the face to the fandom. Then it transitions to Drake in Mexico performing at a quinceanera for the daughter of a drug cartel leader, where they are all drinking and doing hard drugs, which leads to a gunfight, and then they don't want to give Drake his money. I don't think they were going to pick that up. That seems a little bit too real in today's world. A little too grungy for the kids. Which is all a super stereotypical way that Americans convey Mexican culture in Hollywood. Drake didn't want to do the Drake and Josh reboot without making some creative changes because he didn't want to disrespect his Mexican fans. Of Josh course. wouldn't let Drake make those creative changes, and shortly after that, Drake started getting into his legal trouble. In 2020, Drake was outed by his ex-girlfriend Melissa on TikTok about how abusive he was in their past relationship, which went pretty viral. Drake denied all claims of physical abuse, but admitted he could be verbally abusive like a lot of couples get during a fallout. This story led to multiple other accusations, including one that would make the courtroom. He pled guilty via Zoom to a felony attempted child endangerment and a misdemeanor oh, charge Lord. of disseminating matter harmful to juveniles in June of 2021. What? But Drake was accused of much worse, including sending explicit pictures and engaging in sexual activity with a minor. However, he only admitted guilt of sending text messages that were sexual and then stopped once he was aware of the man? victim's age. The situation is definitely creepy. And there are a lot of other factors to consider which have been broken down extensively on YouTube. But the internet is not convinced that Drake is innocent of the harsher things he was accused of. His social reputation has obviously been ruined because of this. Which leads us to today. Josh Peck recently made some big claims on a podcast that he and Drake were never friends. Are you guys like not friends? Not really. No. He told a number of different lies on these podcasts that are starting to make fans question everything. I knew that Drake and I didn't stay in touch for the 10 years since we had made the show. I'm pretty sure you did know it was you. <laughs> it was your life. I'm pretty sure if you, you would know if you made contact with somebody. But no one needed to know that. Here they are in 2012 at what appears to be a house party. Here they are spending Christmas together I mean, in 2013. Hey, You're they, they lied. There are multiple instances of them hanging out in 2014. In 2015, they had Drake come uh, up. Maybe he just happened to be at the same place. Coincidentally, I don't know. It ain't my life. Josh's show grandfather. And I think it's just an opportunity for Drake and I to be working together again. And nice. obviously we love each other. Plus, Drake says that they talked when Josh announced that he was engaged. To suggest that they at least didn't stay in touch is wild. He was surprised he wasn't invited then? If he's going yeah. bananas on you? He's surprised, but then he takes to the internet and he starts writing these tweets that immediately like catch fire. And so then he like leans in and goes on this press tour about how heartbroken he is. Drake tweeted two things and the internet dragged him out. Plus there was no press tour. He said he went on his rampage or like he leaned in and did this, isn't it? The best said there were two tweets <laughs> and no press tour. Come on now, Josh. Look like a little liar there, brother. Two months after that, they made up publicly and made some YouTube content together. After they made up publicly, Drake and Josh throughout the next year would talk about the marriage incident in various interviews. So I think Josh is just remembering things incorrectly. I was at the Video I Music Awards so. and I see him there and he sees with me. With the receipts he just showed now. I never really, I never paid attention too much to the drama. I heard about it, but I never paid attention too much to it. Like I didn't, I didn't watch all these interviews and stuff. But from but the receipts on in this video, it looked like you might have just been either lying straight out or you might be remembering my name a little bit wrong. Either way it go, it was incorrect information. And I go up to him, like, and this might be the most soprano thing I've ever done. And I look at him and I go, go apologize to my wife right now. Josh literally filmed himself walking up to Drake. Does this look like how a gangster moves? And is that the last communication? Pretty much. 
The VMAs was in August of 2017. Since then, they have filmed multiple YouTube videos together, worked on a Drake and Josh reboot, and I can only imagine they spent time together in their personal lives as well. That is not even close to the last time that they've had communication. Drake just recently started a podcast called Drake and Janet with the same branding, which is just kind of weird, bro. Like, let it go. <laughs> Drake still says nothing but good things about Josh and wants nothing more for them to be friends again. After all, the Drake and Josh show was the biggest and most successful thing that Drake has ever done which isn't the same thing for Josh. Maybe he's just trying to separate himself from him, from Drake, because all the legal stuff he got into. Maybe he's just trying to separate himself in public versus private. He has absolutely destroyed his social reputation, and him repairing his relationship with Josh might be the only thing that could win over the people's trust again. However, it's pretty evident that Josh wants nothing to do with Drake. While he may be lying about them never being friends, he has made it very clear that since the show ended in 2007, he wanted to no longer be the secondary character, the fat funny guy, Drake's sidekick, and he worked extremely hard to build a career off his comedy and creative vision. Who could have ever guessed that their real life situation would turn out exactly like the episode Josh is done. Come on, dude. I said I was sorry. Yeah, I heard you. Come on, stop being mad at me. I'm not mad at you. I'm done. <sighs> what is that supposed to mean? Well, I don't want anything to do with you anymore. Josh, what? Look, I'm sorry. Well, look, let me finish, okay? I, I was wrong, okay? I was wrong. What do you mean? Look, I, I need you more than you need me. I need you way more than you need me, all right? I I'm sorry. I just need you to understand that... Uh, I just... Sorry, Josh. I'm sorry. Uh -oh. That was the end. Hey. Like, like I said, hey, maybe just he <laughs> Josh just done with the man. I mean, it is what it is. That's all I gotta say about that one. That's all I gotta say about that one. He just might just be done with the man. He, maybe it's one other thing where they want they they want friendship in in private but he don't want to uh, uh uh destroy his public image being associated with him because he gonna always be associated with drake he gonna all that's gonna always happen it's always going to happen so maybe that's what the deal is anyways my social media is in the description below um I'm pretty sure Josh's social media, you know he is. Hopefully, maybe. I don't know. If you don't, that's fine. If you do, that's great too. My look, my my camera is acting just just crazy today. I, I don't know what to say about that. Listen. Look. <laughs> I'll see you in the next one. Peace. <laughs>